Hello uh, and welcome. My name is John Molyneux and this is the first in a series of short and I hope accessible introductions uh, to the ideas of Marx and Marxism. Uh, I should start by saying that there are many different views of Marx and of Marxism. Uh, and I should explain, I think, where I'm coming from in making these videos. When I say there are different views uh, of Marx, I don't mean that there are just that there are different interpretations of specific points. There are those, of course. Uh, no, I mean something more fundamental than that. I mean there are completely different views of uh, everything that Marx was about. The dominant view in terms of the media, um, and much of public opinion is that Marx should be seen as uh, the founder of communism, the thinker whose ideas formed the basis for the so-called communist regimes of uh, the Soviet Union or Russia, uh, of Eastern Europe, before their collapse in 1989 to 91, uh, of China under Mao Zedong or North Korea, etc. And that therefore, uh, uh, Marx was a malevolent figure in history, a malevolent influence on the course of events in the 20th century. Uh, and to be a Marxist is something to be, as it were, slightly ashamed of, uh, or something you might apologise for. Now, I should say at the outset that uh, uh, I reject this completely. Uh, and the Marxism that I will be talking about has, in my view, uh, nothing uh, to do with this. Um, I believe that the regimes we've just been mentioning, uh, Stalin's Russia, or Brezhnev's Russia for that matter, or North Korea or whatever, um, were nothing to do with genuine socialism or communism, as Marx understood it, or as I understand it. Um, they are clearly tyrannies, uh, and I think that if Marx had lived to see the, these regimes, he would have been repulsed by them and denounced them. The Marx that I'm going to be talking about um, was a Democrat, profoundly so, uh, and a uh, fighter for human liberation. Obviously, those claims need justifying, and I hope that I will justify them in the course of these uh, uh, of these videos. But I think that it, that should be said uh, uh, at the outset. Another view of Marx is that he was uh, as widespread is that he was primarily a nineteenth-century thinker, and therefore obviously out of date today. What he said maybe had a point in the nineteenth century, but the world has moved on and changed. Uh, beyond all recognition, it doesn't apply anymore. Now, obviously, Marx was a 19th century thinker. He was born in 1818 and died in 1883. Um, but I want to argue that his main ideas are not out of date at all. And the reason for that is that a great deal of what he said is, I would suggest, more true today uh, than, than when he first wrote it. Uh, let me give an example. At the end of the Communist Manifesto, which he and Engels wrote in 1848, Marx puts forward the slogan, Workers of the World Unite. Now, at the time that was written, it was, if we're honest, uh, wishful thinking. Uh, at that, in 1848, uh, there were essentially no workers of the world. The working class, uh, as Marx understood it, um, people who lived by the sale of their labour power, as opposed to just people who worked in general peasants and so on, but the working class, as Marx understood it, was confined uh, almost entirely to a small corner of northwestern Europe and maybe a little bit of um, uh, the United States. Now, however, the working class the proletariat exists on all five continents in, in its hundreds, perhaps its thousands of millions. There is no major country in the world that doesn't have a substantial working class. 
And China, which didn't have any workers in 1848, now has something like 500 million uh, workers in it. Another example. If you read, in, again, in the Communist Manifesto, Marx's account of how capitalism is driven to uh, every corner of the earth and to uh, create a world in its own image, these statements seem to be describing what has happened with capitalism in the last 50 years. They fit it fantastically, much better than they fitted capitalism in 1848. Now, the reason I would suggest that Marx uh, uh, is so modern in this regard, the reason for this phenomenon, is not, of course, that he was gifted with some great uh, uh, ability to be a prophet, that he, you know, he had a crystal ball, he was some kind of Nostradamus figure, some kind of uh, gift of prophecy, not at all. It was that he understood the fundamental dynamics of capitalism. He grasped what drove it and therefore the direction uh, in which it would go. And that makes him incredibly relevant for today. A third view of Marx is that he was um, basically an economist. Um, some would say uh, maybe that he was a sociologist or a philosopher. This tends to be an academic view of Marx, and which uh, he is seen as being depends on the discipline that the, uh, uh, the academic is engaged in. He tends to be in, dealt with on this basis that he contributed to economic sociology or philosophy. Um, my view is that he was all of those things, but also none of them. That first and foremost what Marx was, as Engels said in his speech at Marx's grave, uh, graveside, was a revolutionist. His main goal in life was to contribute to the overthrow of capitalism and to the liberation uh, uh, of the proletariat. And all his theoretical work, which was immense, and all his ideas, which were extremely rich, were fundamentally uh, intended to assist the struggle of the working class. They were a guide to action in that struggle. That was their main purpose. So Marx was neither a, a malevolent conspirator, um, some kind of evil genius, nor uh, primarily an academic. Uh, he was rather primarily a revolutionist. Now, when it comes to Marx's ideas, I want to suggest that there are five main elements or themes in his thought. Um, the first of these uh, is that capitalism is an anti-human system. This is because capitalism is founded on alienation, alienated labour, and on exploitation. Those terms obviously need uh, further explanation and justification, and they will receive it in the course of these, uh, 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 of these videos. But because uh, Marx thought that it was based on alienation and exploitation, capitalism would visit on humanity immense suffering and destruction, war, conflict, oppression, barbarism, and so on. Uh, and it would also fundamentally dislocate humans' relationship to nature. That's an aspect of Marx that is often neglected, but was fundamental to him. He said he, uh, and which we, again, which we see very relevant today. Secondly, Marx believed uh, that capitalism produces its own grave digger, the working class or proletariat. Uh, that is, and by that he meant um, people who live by the sale of their labour power. That needs unpacking and explaining too, and of course it will be. Um, but crucially, he thought that in order to liberate itself, uh, the proletariat would have to make a revolution, would have to make a revolution internationally, uh, and that if it did so, it would liberate humanity as a whole, and uh, it would lead to the creation of a classless socialist society. The third main theme in Marx was that on the basis of this discovery of the revolutionary role of the working class, he came to see history in an entirely new way and developed a new theory of history 
uh, which is generally called historical materialism. Uh, um, in historical materialism, history was driven not, as was generally assumed previously, by the deeds and ideas of great men, uh, sometimes women, uh, by the likes of Alexander the Great and Plato, or Kant and Bismarck or Napoleon or those sort of, sort of people, uh, rather the driving force of history was the way in which ordinary people produce the necessities of life. And it was developments in that that was the fundamental force, source of what could be called progress in history, and that this occurred through processes of class struggle, class struggle between large masses of people who stood, who played different roles in this process of, uh, uh, of production. Moreover, Marx believed that the ideas that we have, beliefs, religion, ideas of morality, political theories, all of these things, sometimes called ideologies, were reflections of and a response to developments in these material conditions uh, 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 of life. That's why it was called uh, historical materialism. Um, fourth uh, element was that he developed a critique of capitalist production. That's the subtitle of his masterwork, Capital. A comprehensive and vast analysis of how capitalism works uh, an attempt to discover its laws of motion, uh, reveal its dynamics, which he argued was the uh, competitive accumulation of capital, and to uh, uh, explore and its contradictions. Marx believed that when you understood how capitalism worked, it would also show why capitalism would lead to instability and economic crises, breakdowns in the system. As, as we're seeing at the moment. The fifth element uh, in, in Marxism was a critique of politics. Uh, the centre of this um, was his belief and his argument that the state um, is not, a new, as is claimed, uh, is not a neutral representative of society as a whole. It doesn't stand above or apart from all the different interests in society. Uh, representing the, uh, uh, the interests of the nation or, 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 or of the people as a whole. Rather, uh, the state actually represents the interests of the dominant class within society and therefore in, contemporary, uh, in the contemporary world represents the interests of the capitalist class. And consequently, politics, political parties and so on are also representatives of different and conflicting classes, uh, uh, not of, as they always claim to be, or of the people as a whole. Okay, those are the five main themes. Um, I'd like again to welcome you to this uh, series uh, and hope that uh, if you're interested, uh, you will uh, tune in to future videos. Thank you very much.